Once you start hatching quail eggs, it is very hard to stop. Guten yarding, everybody. In today's video, I'm going to show you our new incubator and the new eggs that we got that we're going to be incubating and hopefully hatching a lot of as we increase the size of our Caternix quail brood. Now this is something that we've been working on for the past two months. We've been experimenting, learning about the process of growing these quail. And now that every single one of the hens that we have is laying consistently, we want to increase that number so that we can have even greater production from our quail. And so today I want to show you our brand new incubator. You know, we've had an inexpensive incubator that we've used and seen some success with, but now we want to move to an incubator that's easier for us to control and more precise. And so we're going to show you that first, and then I'm going to show you what's inside this box, these brand new quail eggs from Southwest Game Birds. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the incubator we're going to be using, which is this Harris Farms Nurture Right 360. Now, we saw this first on My Shire Farm. They did a review of this, and so I think this will actually work really nicely. All right, I've got it out of the box, and I can already tell you this is a major step up for us from our other incubator. We've got a really nice see-through area here, so we should be able to see exactly what's going on at all times. And this one's also digital, but I'm hoping that we get a little bit more of a consistent reading from this one. We struggle with that with our less expensive incubator. I'm going to plug in two different plugs here. It looks like that's all we've got. We've got the egg turner, which I've put in right now. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in the power. Oh, there we go. That's how we know it's on, huh? Now I've noticed a really interesting phenomenon, and that is when I'm trying to film the temperature and the percentage of humidity, it's flashing like this. Now it's not flashing on the actual setup, it's just my camera is catching that flashing. That's really interesting, but the temperature is already climbing up a great deal here. You just have to trust me on the fact that it's not flashing like that. And I know because I've done a little bit of research here that if I hold down on the menu button, this is where I get the opportunity to adjust the temperature. So right now it is set at 99.5 as the basic temperature, which is what we want. But I'm not going to ever count on these to have the perfect temperature, just like I'm not going to count on them to have the perfect level of humidity without me testing it additionally. So we do want a 45% humidity and we do want a 99.5 degree temperature. So in order to confirm that, what I've got is a Govi hygrometer. These are really cool, really nice. We're using this in our other setup as well. And it's a smart hygrometer, which means I can track this on my iPad or my iPhone, you know, a different device. So I'm gonna pull this off. I'm just gonna place this right here so we can see once we've let this sit for a couple of hours, what the temperatures are turning into. You can see we've got our fan here and this is also where the heat is coming from, well there you can see right inside, right up on top. So I'm going to place this back over top here. We're going to see if that temperature, that 99.5 is accurate based on our hygrometer. And the other thing I need to do, this is where we're adding our water. It's a lot easier than our other setup to add water. There's an A and a B place and we remove this little rubber nub here from the top of the B chamber and we add additional water once we get to lockdown stage and we want that humidity level to go up. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back and I'm going to add some water into A. Cause again, we're trying to see, is this going to be a consistent 99.5 degrees? And are we gonna to get to that around 45% humidity? And I'm just gonna put it all in chamber A here, slowly so as not to spill. So now I just need to connect to the Govi hygrometer. All right, you can see we are connected to the app and that temperature is rising and our humidity is also at about 47, 48%. So we're gonna let this sit overnight and we'll see what that levels off to and where we're at and if we need to make any adjustments. I've gone ahead and I've moved our incubator to where we're gonna keep it during the time that the eggs are incubating. And one thing I should point out is there is the ability here to do a test to make sure that the egg turner turns and it clearly does. So we're in good shape there. And I'm gonna go ahead and load this up. All right, let's take a look at the eggs we just received from Southwest Game Birds. This is what's going to be going in to our setup here. And this is our first time getting hatching eggs from Southwest Game Birds. So let's see what we've got in here. We wanna make sure that they're facing with the point down as we let them sit for about 24 hours here. 
All right, here we go. Now, one thing about Southwest Game Birds, they don't guarantee a hatch rate, but they suggest that about 50% of their eggs should hatch. So we're going to let these sit overnight, again, to acclimate to the temperature here. They've been shipped for a couple of days. So we're going to get these ready to go into our incubator. All right, let's take a few seconds here and appreciate the packaging that these eggs come in. As you can see in our packaging, we have foam on the bottom here, foam on the top. So we've got a nice foam sandwich. And then each of our eggs is individually placed inside this foam piece with holes in it and so we've got plenty of packaging these are nicely nicely placed so that we don't have to worry about them running into anything hard or bouncing around during shipping i think that's a huge deal this is a really good way in our opinion to ship these eggs now one of the things i want to show you here is the difference between these celadon quail eggs and the ones that we are typically getting right now from our just our regular Caternix quails. Now the difference, as you can see, is pretty clear. The Celadon layers, the blue eggers, as they call them, lay a blue egg. It's a recessive gene. And now some of these, you'll see, will have spots on them as well. So I'll pull another one out of here that has spots on it. So it's still that nice blue color, but it still has some of the spots. So there's a pretty big difference or range that these Celadon layers are giving us so some are just plain blue some of them have speckles and then not every single one of these is perfectly blue they say that upwards of 15 to 20 percent of the eggs that they lay might be a different color a different shade but still these are a rarer egg and they're absolutely stunning so we're going to have some pretty cool variety here now one thing we did notice is that like my shire farm suggested this seems to run about a half a degree maybe even a degree cooler than what it says up here so we've set this at 100 you can see our percentage here for humidity is just fine there was one of these with a crack that we could tell but we only ordered 50 eggs and they sent us 60. so i would say that's a pretty good deal and we should be in great shape in terms of getting this in here i think that's one of the reasons why they send a couple of extra now i know they make a 3d adapter for this that you can use that is specifically for quail eggs but i'm going to go ahead and use this one anyway so we're just going to be loading up multiple eggs into each slot and i'm going to inspect each egg as i go through to make sure that there aren't any cracks or anything like that in them but we're going to keep them pointed toward the interior of the machine as we get them loaded up we were able to fit 44 of the 60 quail eggs in here so now we have to find a spot for the other 15 because that one is cracked but let's take a look at this one last time before i cover it up and actually, and actually, one of the things that I absolutely love about this nurture right is that we can still see everything in here nicely. So we'll be able to watch this, you know, as we get into that first two weeks where we're turning everything before we get down to lockdown. We can watch this process happen and we'll monitor it closely well we've got our main incubator all loaded up with as many eggs as we could put in there and so 14 days from now when we enter lockdown it's going to be an interesting time we'll try to candle everything it's one of the cool things about the new incubators that has a built-in candler and so at that point we're going to candle everything and see how we're doing but I can't wait to see our percentages. Now I'm gonna remind you of one more thing that I read on the packaging that I think is important for you to remember, and that is that Southwest Game Birds does not guarantee a hatch rate. They suggest that it's around 50%. I'm hopeful that it'll be a lot higher, especially as we take care of these. And I know that they take the eggs as soon as they're laid and put them in the packaging and send them out to us. And so I'm really hopeful for a higher percentage, but we will know as the weeks progress how we're gonna do. Well, now I have to find a place for the rest of these eggs to incubate as well. So while I work on that, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.